What's going on guys? My name is John Elder from CodingBee.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do input boxes with Kinter and Python. All right, what's going on guys? In the last video, we learned how to do buttons. In this video, we're going to talk about input boxes, how to input data into your program. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So that's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee at just $27, which is insanely cheap. So I've got the program we did yesterday. Let's go ahead and close this. And let's just run this real quick to refresh our memories. And so just pull this over so that we get this little button. If we click it, it puts some text up on the screen. So that's kind of cool, but we want to expand on this and put a little like input box, sort of like a web form, you know, where a box you can type stuff into. And then we want to do stuff with whatever we type into that thing. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's go ahead and close this, pull our text or our stuff back up. And to do an input box in Kinter, we use not an input widget, which is what you would think they would call it, but it's called an entry widget. We're entering data, right? So let's go up here to file and let's save this as entry.py. So we want to create a entry widget, right? So I'm just going to call this E, E for entry. So E equals entry. This is the entry widget. And we want this to be in root. Now there's a whole bunch of other stuff we can put in here, uh, parameters and things, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. So instead of doing that, let's just e pack this guy in here and go ahead and save this. And so this is entry.py. So I'm going to pull up my thing here and let's run entry.py. Remember, this is just a, the terminal that I use. You can use any terminal. I'm in C forward slash GUI, which is the directory where I'm saving all of these files for this course. Okay, so pull this over. And we see, you know, we've got this box, we can type stuff in. If we click here, it doesn't do anything with this. This is from the last episode, the last video we did. So okay, we've got an input box. That's kind of cool. Um, before we go on, let's talk about some of these parameters. So we can immediately change the size of this thing. So we can go with equals, we've seen with before, I think, and I'm just going to call this 50. So if we save this, come back and run it. You can see now our input box is quite a bit bigger. All right, so whatever size you want, you can do that. It's pretty simple. Uh, let's see what else we can do. We can change the color in the same way that we changed the, the button color. Remember FG and BG. So if we want to go BG equals, you know, I don't know, blue, right? So if we save this, come back here and hit reload. Now the box is blue and the stuff we type is black. It's kind of ugly, but you know, whatever floats your boat. We can also do foreground color and let's change this to white, for instance. Oops. There we go. Save this, run it. And we get the same ugly blue, but now the text inside is white. Okay, that's kind of cool, I guess. Still a little goofy. So let's get rid of that because that is just ugly. We can also change the border width. And so let's say, I don't know, five. So if we save this and run it. Is that big enough? Can you tell? So you can see the border has sort of a raised kind of thing to it. I don't know why you would want to do that, but if you did, you could do that. So that's kind of cool. So those are sort of the, there's other parameters you can play around with. And I'm not going to really talk about them because they're, they're not as cool, <laughs> right? But, uh, I guess you could Google it if you're really interested. But now we want to talk about, all right, what, what can we do with text that's been entered into this form or into this input box, into this entry widget? How do we actually do stuff with it? Well, what we want to do is we can pull an e.get. And this get function gets whatever you've typed into that, that thing. So let's, let's use this with our button. So We've got this button that says click me. Instead, let's change this to enter your name, right? And we want when this runs, we want this my click function to fire. So we've got the command right here, command equals my click. And now 
So when we click the button, it'll execute. So what do we want to happen when we click the button? Well, let's go, let's just change this my label. Instead of the text, let's just type in that e.get function. All right, so let's save this and run it and see if that works. Pull this over. All right, enter your name, John. Boom, John. <laughs> All right, so it's kind of cool. Now we can do sort of Pythonic things with this if we want. If we want to get crazy, we can type in, you know, hello, and then a plus sign to concatenate it in. This is just pure Python. This is not a Kinter thing, right? We know how to con con concatenate, you know, smush two things together with Python. So we can do that. So let's run this. Somebody is texting me like crazy. So type in John. Hello, John, right? So that's kind of cool. Uh, we can also be sort of looking at this, this area right here is getting a little crazy, right? So right up here, or really anywhere inside our function, if we want, we can say, um, we can call a hello variable, right? And we can say hello equals then the text hello, and then we can concatenate e dot get just like that. And then down here, we didn't really talk of this about this in the past, but you can type in variables for your text fields, as long as they're not, uh, let's see, in quotation marks, or if you put them in quotation marks, it's just a string, and it's going to treat it as a text string. But if you do it like this, it's a variable. So now if we save this, and run it. We see enter your name, John Elder, let's get fancy, let's do the last name. Hello, John Elder, right. And if we keep doing this, cool. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. That is how you do that. Now, one last little thing that I, I didn't talk about. We can go E dot insert. And then now we want to give this an index number zero, we don't need to talk about that. There's only one. There's only one box. It's the zero with box. And we can now give this a default value, we can say, enter your name. All right. So if we save this, what this will do is this will put some uh, default text inside of the text box, right. So you know, a lot of times if you go to like a web form, it'll say, you know, email inside the little box where you're supposed to type in your email or whatever, it'll say username inside the box. If you want to do something like that, you can run this. And then here it says enter your name, right. So then you would want to do that. Hello, John. So uh, pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty easy as everything has been so far in T Kinter. So now, all right, we can create a program. We can have input boxes so we can enter data in, we can click a button, we can now do stuff with that, you know, programmatically behind the scenes, we can then output based on what we typed in. So we've got really the basis, the fundamentals of almost any program, like, what does any program do except for take in data, do stuff with it, and then output it. And here we have everything you need to know to do that with Kinter and a graphical user interface using Python. So it's very, very simple, very straightforward. It's less than 20 lines of code. And we've got a fully functioning program that actually does something. Now it does something stupid, it just enters a name onto the screen. But hey, you know, you can take just this and really make any kind of program you want, right? Say you want to create a stock quote program. Well, enter the stock quote, right? We could just change this to enter your stock quote, right? If we save it, run it again, enter your stock quote. So if I type in, you know, uh, Facebook, and then click the button, it says Hello, Facebook, but how easy would it be programmatically behind the scenes to instead of just print Hello, Facebook on the screen, to take that Facebook stock quote, connect to a third party API, get the stock quote, bring it back and put it put the current stock price on the screen. It'd be pretty simple to do that. In fact, we're going to start doing things like that in the next few videos as we play around with this. Um, but that's really, really cool. And just so just that easy to create really cool 
programs with this. So that's all for this video. If you liked it and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all of my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all of my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.